was the finale of Dark Side of the Ring, the Owen Hart story. And I thought long and hard about whether I want to say what I'm about to say. And I'm sure that somebody will take a soundbite of this and spin it in all sorts of horrible ways. But I'm going to explain what I'm saying here. So let's listen to the whole thing, okay? I hate Dark Side of the Ring, okay? Like... I don't mean that in the sense, like, I used to hate Impact, okay? The show last night on Owen Hart, I mean, it was a fascinating show. It wasn't, it wasn't like, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll say it this way, okay? So, for years, people wanted me to write a book about Impact, TNA Wrestling. I never wanted to do it, because I said, no one's going to buy it, okay? That was like the story of Impact forever, it's like they would always get the same number of viewers, but like nobody, none of the Impact fans ever spent any money on Impact. And so it's like, why would I write a book about this? I mean, I'll, I'll shorten my own life. It's just, it's so hard to write a book. And there's so much more to write about with Impact than WCW because it's been around for like two decades now. Whereas WCW, I wrote about 1995 to 2001. I was, I'm never going to write a book about Impact. And then I was approached about a, a, a book about WWE, 100 Things WWE Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die. And I, I agreed to write that because I thought, hey, it's WWE. I mean, people are going to buy the book, okay? And people did buy the book, but but people did not buy the book in nearly the numbers that they did for the death of WCW. And part of that was because the book just happened to came, come out like right around the time that this company like totally collapsed in the fall of 2018. And like the number of people that have quit watching since the fall of 2018 is like mind blowing. And, and my point of this is it's the worst time possible for that book to come out. Okay. If I'm looking at my own book as a critic, the advice I would give myself is bad time to release that book, buddy. Should have done it a couple of years earlier. Okay. That's what I'm saying about Dark Side of the Ring. This year has been so awful. This year sucks. Coronavirus. I mean, we're approaching a... I haven't even looked at the numbers lately, but we got to be near 100,000 people dead here in this country. We've all been on lockdown. There's no fans going to wrestling events. It's like, this is the most depressing time in people's... Like, in most people's lives. And so, of all the times... For Dark Side of the Ring to be airing on television. That's what I'm trying to say here. That The last thing I want to watch right now is a show about all the horrible, miserable things that have happened in pro wrestling. And on top of that, this episode had to air the week that Shad Gaspard goes missing. And like his last act is to tell rescuers to go save his son instead of himself. And he gets sucked underneath. And then Larry Sanka dies, who like, you know, I, I didn't know him very well. But Mike did. And I mean, he was like, he was one of us for decades. So there's Monday, those two guys. And then, of course, on Tuesday, it's a premiere of Dark Side of the Ring, which is, it, it, it's not, ex it, it's actually a lot like Shad Gaspard, about a guy who never should have died. And his last act was screaming for the referee to get out of the way because he didn't want to fall on him as he's literally in the last moments of his life. It sucks. It's nothing against the producers of Dark Side of the Ring or the show itself. The show is fascinating. I mean, on the show, they actually have, they actually, Martha Hart has saved the little tiny latch that Owen Hart was strapped into. A quick release latch that was designed for sailboats. And it was designed so you could quickly open it so that the sailboat, so like the mast or whatever, could come undone. They hung this dude from the ceiling with one quick release attachment. I mean, hello. Like, I don't want to get on people 20 years later, but I mentioned this to Dave. The whole Blue Blazer gimmick was like a spoof on Sting. And if you recall, Sting would come down to the rafters, and he was like double, triple latched up. I mean, they latched that guy up to the degree that he would land in the middle of the ring, 
and he would be frantically trying to unlatch everything for like 10, 15, 30 seconds. And the NWO had to stand there, a whole pack of them, and they had to stand there and wait for the hero to unbuckle. And then, of course, like a bad movie, they would run at him one at a time and he would beat him up. But you know what? They did it. They made sure the guy was safe. And the fans didn't care. The fans suspended their disbelief because he was a hero. And they would wait for him to swing his bat one at a time at all the bad guys. And I said to Dave, and I never even thought about it. I never even thought about this till Monday. But if you're doing a spoof of Sting with Owen Hart, I mean, really, it should go the other direction. Not a quick release. It should be that he's strapped in with like 15 different straps. And he gets in the ring and it takes him three minutes to undo everything. And then finally he's free and like by that time he gets beaten up. Like, that's the way it could have been done. But instead they wanted a quick release contraption. Which is just like the stupidest thing. I mean, it's it, I watched that show and, you know, nothing against, once again, nothing against the makers. I mean, the, the shows have done great for, for uh, whatever the name of the thing is. Uh, Vice. I mean, they, they, it's like the highest ratings for Vice. It's like the show does great for them, and, and they do a great job with the show. But man, what a miserable thing to have to watch. 